What is up, Buck? Doug with DNA in the garage. Today we are going to be firing up the ugly drum smoker that we've been building for what seems like forever for the first time. Got the ugly drum smoker here. You guys saw the video on building that. This is the final version of the charcoal basket. You guys pretty much saw all of this. I cut these triangle holes uh, off camera because I decided it needed more air. I'm real confident with this setup. What we're doing today is we're gonna season this thing and then hopefully we're gonna cook some chicken wings on it. Uh, my understanding, I am not, I've never smoked anything, I've never owned a smoker. This is my first time doing all of this. But my understanding is you wanna season it to kind of get a good layer of not really grease, but uh, just like flavor in there. So we're gonna season it with some hickory, which is a real um, robust flavor. We're gonna use some bacon on the grates. They say letting the bacon uh, drip right onto the coals kind of coats the whole thing in a good uh, flavor. So that's what we're gonna do today. The whole thing's gonna be a learning experience. I thought you guys watched me make the dang thing. You might as well stick around uh, and help me learn how to dial it in and everything. So first things first, we got some coals in the chimney here. We're gonna go ahead and get these started. Then we're gonna dump them into here, get this in the UDS and start bringing it up to temperature. All right, now while our coal chimney is getting ready, I'm gonna spray the inside of this drum along with all the grates and possibly even the outside of the charcoal basket with canola oil. I have all kinds of sounds working against me today. I got an air conditioner, it's windy. There's a friggin' helicopter up there. I feel like Project Dan trying to uh, mitigate the sounds here. Let's just wait. Anyway, like I was saying, we're gonna spray everything inside of this drum with canola oil. That's gonna bake on to form a coating that'll protect everything and hopefully keep flavors going and moving and, and all types of good stuff. Uh, so let's do that. Alrighty, Buck, we're gonna be putting down a little pan like this in the bottom to catch the coals. And uh, our coals are just about ready, so I'm gonna get that charcoal box and we're gonna get going. All right, now you probably noticed we had to change venue up onto the deck, which means I'm gonna put this in the UDS first and then pour the coals in. I don't want anything getting on the deck. That, oh, got that bad boy in like that. Got our chimney and nice hot coals. Going with four, uh, Four good pieces of hickory here. Put our grates in. Oh, put this top on. We're gonna, we've got all our ball valves open, plus the valve in the, the back unscrewed. Uh, our vents are all the way open. Just gonna wait for this thing to get up to temperature, about 250 degrees, then we'll start messing with it, trying to dial it in, keep it consistent, then we'll slap some bacon on there. Only about five minutes in, in order to see temperatures jumping up pretty darn quick as this is my first time ever using this thing it is very difficult to not rip that top open to see what's going on in there but uh got my ball valves like i said wide open this guy in the back wide open uncapped so once it gets up to 250 we'll put this back on probably start dialing these back all right friends we've been cooking for about a half hour uh we reached our 250. Um, initially, obvious issue is that uh, lid does not seal very well, but I think that's an issue that can be fixed with an oven gasket. So that's something I'll look into later. For now, because we're at 250, we close that bad boy up down there. I cut this valve just a little bit. We're going to see what that does. They say it takes about 20 minutes to a half hour for your changes to take effect in one of these things. So I'm going to go back in for a half hour. What I'm doing right now is processing chicken wings, cutting them into the three pieces uh, to get ready for later tonight. I'm going to keep doing that. I'll come back out in a half hour. If it's still holding steady at 250, uh, we're going to throw some bacon on and get this season going. I'll tell you what, it smells great out here. That hickory. Yeah, buddy. Alrighty, friends, we are hovering right in the 230 range, which for me right now is good. I actually have one of the ball valves all the way closed. So we're just running on one valve. An interesting thing about smokers, if you don't know, taking the top off actually increases the heat because you let a bunch of oxygen in. So we're going to try to do this quickly. We're going to pop this top off. We're going to lay our bacon in there, get this top back on, and uh, let this thing season up. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Are you ready? If I was smart, I would have had the grate outside of the grill so that I just had to lower it in with the bacon already on it, but I didn't do that, so it is what it is. 
Now the idea here is that all of the drippings are going to hit those coals. They're going to turn into their own smoke and we're going to season this thing not only in the hickory but also in bacon. And I find that to be just a super agreeable thing. And for good measure, and because we have two left over, we'll just hang these two. Who knows what's going to happen there. I'm okay with it. This is all a learning process. We're going to whip this top back on. Oh boy, so it don't get too much hotter in there. All right, now we're going to let this thing go for a good long time. I'm pretty much going to let it smoke until the charcoal burns out, because uh, the whole purpose of this is not really to cook anything specific, but uh, to, um, to season it. So probably take that bacon off, I don't know, check it in two hours maybe. Um, even if the bacon were to become unedible, meaning it cooked too long, it would serve its purpose of getting its bacon awesomeness infused into the cooker. Though I am hoping to be able to eat that bacon. Alrighty friends, this is what we have after two hours of smoking. That bacon looks freaking delicious. Uh, honestly, if I was cooking it to eat, I wouldn't have cooked it quite as long, but uh, this thing is a success. I am going to uh, probably reload the basket a little bit, switch out the hickory wood for apple, and we are going to get going on some chicken wings. I'm real happy with this thing. I was able to keep it right at 250 for a solid two hours, did not waver almost at all. Uh, I'm going to keep it around 225 for the chicken wings. Once we have them on there, I will uh, bring you all in for the show. All right, friends, I am not sure how unorthodox it may be to switch woods in the middle of one thing. Uh, but I did it, pulled out the hickory chunks, put in some apple wood, which is going to be a less aggressive flavor for the chicken wings. Because of having this thing open, it's, it's raging right now. We're going to try to bring it down right on that blue and red line there. Um, so I got the ball valve clicked way back, chimney vents closed. Not that it really matters with all my leakage here, but uh, yeah, man. All right, so we got our wings chilling in the dry rub. They've been in here for a few hours. Uh, soon as... That gets up to temperature or down to temperature, and I'm confident it's staying right at the 225 level. We're gonna get these bad boys on, smoke them for a good two hours. Whoo, they're gonna be good. Alrighty, Buck. These things have been going for about two and a half hours, right at 230. Thing held its temperature perfectly. Let's take a look. Oh, hell yeah. That is just what I was hoping for. We even snuck a little kielbasa under there. I'm gonna take these out, put them on the grill for like 10 minutes just to make sure they're nice and crispy. But these things look friggin' perfect. Nailed it. Alrighty, Buck, dinner is done. The day is done. This smoke is done. The food has been enjoyed. Uh, let's do a little recap. I know filming got sporadic there as I got more and more fixated on what I was doing here today. Uh, I did take the wings off of here finish them over on the grill. It made them a little bit crunchy. They were so good. They were incredibly good. So let's recap what we did today. We seasoned this and you can see, can you see in the camera, this isn't black or anything. That silver grate is uh, gold now. It's seasoned gold. And um, the smoke and the grease from the bacon definitely affected these grates and put a coating of um, I don't know if it's charred oil or whatever, the canola oil, everything. So that went perfectly. Having never done that before, uh, I can totally see that this is what it's supposed to look like, this purple color. Or purple, what am I talking about? Gold color. Uh, I did save one wing so that you guys could see uh, exactly what they look like. They came out this beautiful mahogany color. Um, then I put them on the grill and it just crisped them up a little bit. The only mistake I made was I wung it with my um, dry rub. I learned something today. I use a dry rub on everything. I use it on chicken. I use it on pork. Anything that I'm grilling. I use the same one on this. Eh, not as good. I need to find a dry rub that plays with the smoke. Uh, but the apple smoke on this, it's incredible, man. The meat inside of these. I mean, I eat wings all the time. Y'all know if you're eating wings, you get through the outside and the inside is just bland chicken meat. It is what it is. You dip it in ranch or blue cheese or something, you're done with it. The meat inside was just as good, if not better, than the uh, perfectly crisped up, uh, smoky outside skin. Oh, man, I'm a wing fan, I'm a wing connoisseur, and this absolutely killed it. Now, onto the charcoal basket. Um, the charcoal basket I built, as you guys know, completely unconventional, um, a lot smaller than most. I had no problem. I ran this thing from, when did I start it? Two o'clock, we did the bacon and all that, then we did the wings, we took the wings out around seven, 
and it's like 8 o'clock now and I could still be running this if I wanted to. I closed all the valves and shut everything down but there's still plenty of wood uh, so that charcoal basket halfway full even would have run at least another couple hours uh, so if I filled it up all the way I have no doubt that I could not do a nice long maybe like a 10 hour smoke. You hear about guys doing like 15 hour smokes on brisket I'd probably have to build a bigger basket. Uh, so anyway man more to come on this I've been <laughs> here's the interesting thing right so I decided several months ago over the winter that I wanted to build an ugly drum smoker and about two three months ago I started uh, compiling the pieces now you know if you follow me on Instagram that I've been working on this thing little by little by little uh, for months like two months between collecting all the parts building the drum building the uh, firebox so this wing right here man, is like two months in the making you know a lot of people along the way have have asked me like well how much is it to just buy one you know uh, the implication of course being well you bought a drum and you bought grates and all this crap isn't it less expensive to just go and buy it and to you you clearly don't get what we're doing here do you uh, the satisfaction that I got from having a delicious dinner smoked off of a thing that I built my own not my own design but my own take on it for sure you know I didn't use anybody's plans uh, I know that you guys out there understand what I mean and I see this all the time I try to build it handmade whenever I can and people are always asking me oh you made yourself an end table there wouldn't it have just been cheaper to not make an end table and go buy an end table you know oh you made yourself a front hitch for your WJ it wouldn't have been cheaper and easier to just go and buy one you guys are missing the point man the satisfaction you get from something like this and even better it worked out great this smoker right here real mint anyway i'm rambling uh i this video didn't have a ton of content per se i do understand that i do think that if you wanted to season a new um smoker you could use this method that i just used right here with the hickory and the bacon that worked great you can see on this grate it's got that beautiful gold color the one down below is the same the inside has a nice uniform sheen to it, uh, and I, I take that to be from the smoke and the bacon uh, grease and all that. Uh, the reason I made this video, even though there's not a ton of real hard content, was it was a conclusion to this project. You guys have watched me do it. You, if you haven't seen the video on how to make the UDS and how to make the firebox, two separate videos, go check those out. They will be linked uh, somewhere. Um, but this was the conclusion worked out perfectly more to come there'll be some d e cookouts uh i would love to we've been kicking it around i talk to project dan all the time jtm bearded jeep we're always talking about having to get together getting all the youtube family together so maybe someday we'll get all the youtube family together we'll pack this thing full of dank meats and we'll smoke them on out so comment down there in the squawk boxes let me know what you think about the uds about the process about this beautiful mahogany wing we got right here uh i'd love to hear what you guys think um Especially if we've attracted any smoke fans, you know, I know I got my Jeep fans, my automotive fans, but if these videos have attracted anybody who knows what they're doing on one of these things, I'd love to hear what you think about my process and what you saw here today. So, as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.